Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechak, Dash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations, much love and respect to Yahweh out there pushing this word out in truth and sincerity. Now, this lesson is going to be about how we know we're at the end of the world. Okay? And when we speak about the end of the world, it's not the end of the world as. A lot of these uh, people would think, because they really don't understand the Bible, thinking at the end of the world, meaning the earth is going to blow up. No, the earth is not going to blow up. The end of the world just means the end of a rulership. Let's look, let's type in the word end, the sentence end of the world. And we're going to look it up in Matthews. Which I had to get Matthew's the 24th chapter anyway, so might as well jump there. This is Matthew's 24. And I'll start at verse 1. It says, And Yahweh Shai went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to shew him the buildings of the temple. And Yahweh Shai said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down and he was referring to 70 a.d or 67 a.d when um, jerusalem was besieged by the by the romans okay it says and as and so in other words he was prophesying and as he sat upon the mount of olives the disciples came upon him privately saying tell us when shall these things be or what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world. So they were asking him a few questions because they're saying, when shall those things be uh, referring to not uh, once uh, the stones being thrown down of the temple? Okay. That and the end of the world are two different time periods because this already happened when the, the, um, the temple was besieged. Okay. was destroyed by uh, Titus. Okay. And um, and uh, who was the uh, general that taught Titus was um, Tiberius Julius Alexander, and he was an Israelite. All right, they knew he was an Israelite, but he did, he was a coon. He was basically he was a he was a damn uh, sellout. Okay, like a lot of our people are today. You see what I'm saying? But um, what had happened was they destroyed the temple, and that was a totally different time period from the end of the world because we're now at the time of the end of the end, end of the world. Yahweh Shai will definitely be coming back in these times, okay? This is the last generation. I definitely believe that this is the last generation. This is Matthew 24 and 3. It says, And as he sat upon the, the Mount of Olives, and, his, and, and the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when shall uh, these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? Now, let's look up this word, end of the world, or world, rather. The word should be, e uh, okay, here we go. oh, excuse me, so it should be eon, but we're going to see here. Yes, okay, eon, no, I, or ion, however you would pronounce it, you pronounce it eon or ion, let's see how, let's see how he pronounces it. Strong's G-165, ion. Ion, 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 okay. So ion, that's not the same as oinkomene or cosmos. Those are different meanings for the word world. That's why this English language is very deceptive. Okay. So cosmos mean, I mean, um, ion would mean ever, world, never, uh, evermore, age. Okay. Eternal age. The correct pronunciate the correct um definition would be age let's look up the word age excuse me so i can this <coughs> Age, 
age, the length of time that a person has lived or a thing that has existed, a distinct period of history. Okay, and when you look at a an age, right, in, in this sense, it's dealing with uh, a rulership. Okay, every kingdom, right, would last about, what, 250 years. It wouldn't, it, most king, the kingdoms would not pass 250 years, right, whether it be the, the, uh, you know the um the babylonian empire the persian empire you know the egyptian empire whatever the case may be they were always at the height of their power you know for about 250 years but when it comes to um the age the, the word age itself you can just attribute it to a rulership of a people okay let me see if there's any other definition it says forever an unbroken age, meaning an unbroken ru rulership, okay, perpetuity of time, eternity, the world's universe, period of time, age. It's not dealing with that. It's dealing with a, a rulership, okay, an unbroken rule, okay. It says properly an age by extension, perpetuity, uh, by implication, the world, especially uh, Jewish, it says uh, a messianic period. Present or future, age, course, eternal, evermore, beginning of the while world began without end, right? Because it also speaks about uh, the world of Israel being a world without end. Meaning what? Well, let's let's look that up right now. Let's look that up right now, okay? Because I'm trying to make it the understanding clear for you that it's not speaking about. The planet Earth, nor is it speaking about, um, you know, uh, time itself. It's speaking about a rulership, a period of rulership. That's what it's speaking about. You see, this is um, Isaiah 45 and 17. It says, but Israel shall be saved. Well, let me click on this. I know this computer is moving so slow. So like it says, um, but Israel shall be saved with an in the Lord with an everlasting salvation, meaning what we're going to have an everlasting rulership. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end, meaning our rulership will be without end. Let's look up this word world in the Hebrew. Okay. And it was, it would be ever everlasting or perpetual. It's the same word, the Hebrew equivalent of, of that word ion okay always long duration antiquity uh fu futurity forever everlasting evermore old ancient ancient time forever always continuous existence okay perpetual all right okay but it's dealing with a rulership that's why it says they're a world without end it's a rulership without end you have to understand what it's saying so that's the point on that okay that's the point on that let's go back to matthews the 24th chapter so the end of the world would mean what the end of this in the end of the edomite rulership because the edomites are the last rulers of this earth okay the last heathen rulers of this earth, excuse me. The last heathen rulers of this earth. Uh, matter of fact, let me get another precept. second here well, that's Luke 21 
is Luke 21 and verse 24, and it says, matter of fact, I'll go up to 22. It says, For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. <clears throat> but woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. This is what was supposed to happen, right? After the Lord um, was crucified, right? The, the Israelites would be led into captive, led captive into all nations. Okay. This is part of the signs of the end. Okay. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down by of the Gentiles. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So Jerusalem, the land of Israel, will be trodden down by the Gentiles. Okay, that's why it says that a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. Okay, shall be trodden down by the Gentiles to the time of uh, the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Meaning to the time of their rulership being over. Okay, well let's get um, Ezekiel 36. Okay, let's get Ezekiel 36. And then I'm going to deal with the statue in, in, in Daniels, man. Okay. Give me one second here. Okay, this is Ezekiel 36 and verse 5. It says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord power, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the, he the heathen and against all Idumia. Idumia is another way of saying Edom. Okay which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart or despiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. This is the time that we're in now. They've taken the Lord's land into their possession because we're at the time of the Gentiles. Okay. And the land is a prey because you have them fighting against those uh, Ishmaelites for the land. And there's other people in that land as well, other heathens. Okay. So clearly, we're we're not at the, we're not in the kingdom, right? So this is part of the signs of the end. Okay. Now let's get back to. Oh, actually, you know what? What I wanted to get. second chapter and the 31st verse says thou o king saw us and behold a great image this great image whose brightness was excellent stood before thee and the form thereof was terrible the image's head was of fine gold his breast his arms of silver his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass. So the gold is what? Is the Babylonian Empire. Uh, his breast and his arms, that's the, uh, the Medio Persian Empire. Okay. His belly and his thigh of brass, that's the Greek Empire. His legs of iron, that's the Roman Empire. And his feet, part iron and part clay. This is this present revival of the Roman Empire. The, this beast system that we're presently in right now. Okay, this is what that the feet of iron and clay is. Okay, partly strong and partly weak and divided. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands. That stone is Yahweh shot. So uh, this whole statue represents the time of the Gentiles. Okay, represents the rulership or the worlds of the Gentiles. Okay, when these worlds, when this world is over. This world of the Gentiles is over, right? That's when the, the world of Israel will be established, the world without end, okay? It says, thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and break them in, uh, to pieces. Then was the iron and uh, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together. 
and became like the shaft of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away that no place was found for them. Why? Because Yahweh Shai is going to take them down. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Right? You can read um, Isaiah the second chapter. The mountain that's going to be above all these other mountains. Okay? You see? So, we're at, we're at the time of the Gentiles, but we're at the end. We're at the feet of this, this statue. Okay? We're at the feet. We're at the end of the world. This is another sign that we're at the end of the world. Now, let's get back to Matthew's 22nd cha 24th chapter. Excuse me. This is the 24th chapter. This is Matthew 24 and verse 4. It says, And Yahweh answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Hamashiach, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And we we'll constantly hear about these rumors of war. Okay, constantly hear about these rumors of war, and the last war is what is the um, is the World War Three. This is the one we're waiting for. So once that's not a rumor, uh, we're in the last world's war, the war to end all war. Okay, so we're clearly at the end. Uh, matter of fact, let me get a, a precept on that. This is Revelations 11 and 13. It says, In the same hour was, the, was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell. What is that great earthquake dealing with? That great earthquake is dealing with the nuclear missiles. Okay? The, when the nuclear missiles hit America, all right, it's going to be overkill. And it's going to cause the earth to shake. Okay? It's going to cause the earth to quake. This is the great earthquake, which is going to be a result of World War III. And the same hour was that was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city felt the tenth part of America. Okay, because America is broken up into ten area codes. Okay. It says, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, meaning a complete number. It's not seven thousand people that's gonna die, it's a complete number. Okay. When you add those zeros to it, <laughs> the complete number is a lot. Okay. It says, um, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the, to the, uh, to the power of heaven. The second woe is past and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. What, what does that mean? The second destruction, the second war is past the second world war. Behold, the third war cometh quickly. Okay, so we're almost at the time of that world war coming. All right, so it's, it's, it's about to uh, no longer be a rumor. <clears throat> it says, for nation shall rise up against nation. Nation shall rise against nation, excuse me, king, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Well, the famines, we see the famine is about to, is about to hit. On a, a worldwide scale, this is about to be a worldwide famine. Okay, uh, it's going into the what the uh, the black horse. Okay, and the pe the pestilences. Every second, there's a new. The brother had a, a title. Another day, another uh, pestilence. I'll say it that way. There's all kind of pestilence around. There's the pox. There's there's this. There's the polio. There's this. There's that. Okay, the Lord is making a statement, and we're clearly at the end. And they're constantly coming out. All right. And earthquakes in diverse places. All right. And I'm going to get, I have an article dealing with that too. All these are the, the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. You know, and really these, um, the Israelites back then, you know, they really weren't, hated of all nations i mean the, the the disciples you know they didn't really 
they weren't really hated of all nations. It was more concentrated, so to speak, with the churches. But but now we're at the time of the internet age where all these different nations they have they um they see the Israelites, okay, and they're gonna be uh, and the Israelites are gonna be demonized in front of all these different nations because what America's a melting pot, Canada's a melting pot, UK's a melting pot, and all these different places around the world where the brethren are scattered. Right or amongst these other nations, so they're going to be able to be uh, to see this, okay? And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another, and many false prophets shall arise, and shall deceive many. And, and we're definitely in that time. And because because back then it was very listen, you were, if you're a false prophet, you were you're likely to be put to death. This is, this was no joke to be a false prophet in the, in that in the, the ancient world, man. In the ancient world, you were, if you were a false prophet, you would have been put to death. So it wasn't just so much people popping up with YouTube channels talking about, oh yeah, I got, I got, I, I believe this, I believe that. No, no, people definitely <clears throat> held their peace a lot. Okay. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And when you look up that word "cold," it's psycho. Right? There's going to be a lot of psychos walking around. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. So we have to endure all these different things, all these different tribulations. Okay. And it said that these things would be sorrows. Okay. But anyways, let's deal with um, the earthquakes, right? I have an article right here <clears throat> saying, um, it says, why are we having so many earthquakes? Okay. Has natural occurring earthquake activity been increasing? Does this mean a big one is going to hit? Or we haven't um, had any earthquakes in a long time? Does this mean that the pressure is building up for a big one? Okay, I'm going to start from this part. It says, the National Earthquake Information Center now locates about 20,000 earthquakes around the globe each year, or approximately 55 per day. As a result of the imp uh, improvements in communications and the increased interest in natural disasters, the public now learns about earthquakes more quickly than ever before. According to long-term records, since uh, about 1900s, since 1900, excuse me, we expect that 16 major earthquakes in any given year. That includes 15 earthquakes. In the magnitude 7 range and one earthquake magnitude 8.0 or greater. In the past 40 to 50 years, our records show that we have exceeded the long-term average number of major earthquakes about a dozen times. Okay? So, earthquakes are constantly on the rise. We are at the end. Okay? Okay? This is Habakkuk 2 and verse 1. It says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. And I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it shall speak and not lie, though it tarry, wait for it, because it shall it shall surely come, it, sh it will not tarry. But it said that it shall speak, meaning what? It's going to be clear that we're at the end. It's going to be clear that the signs that the Lord was given would be coming to pass. This is 2nd Ezra, the 5th chapter. And I'll start at verse 1. It says, nevertheless, as coming the tokens... As coming the tokens, behold, the day shall come, that they which dwell upon the earth, uh, the earth shall be taken in great number, and the way of truth shall be hidden, and the land shall be barren of faith. You see, that's the time we're coming to because the Lord is about to remove his prophets. Okay, he's about to hide the way of truth. It says, uh, the prudent man shall keep silence because it is an evil time. Excuse me. It says, 
but iniquity shall be increased above that which now thou seest or that thou hast heard long ago right and we clearly see that iniquity has increased to a, a great great level now they're trying to legalize zoophilia so listen we're we're at the end man and the land that thou seest now to have root shalt thou see wasted suddenly okay let's go down oh it says uh it says uh Verse 7, it says, And the Sodomite, Sodomitish sea shall cast out fish and make a noise in the night, which many have not known, but they shall all hear the voice thereof. And is not the sea constantly casting out fish? Is not the, sea, the, the fish is constantly coming up ashore? And the whales and things like this? Yes. Okay. Because what? The, the, these Edomites have destroyed the whole earth. Okay. So that's part of the signs as well. It says, uh, there shall be a confusion also in many places, and the fire shall be off sent out again, and the wild beasts shall change their places, and the menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. Let's deal with these things, okay? Uh, the, the fire being sent out. We're going to get into an article dealing with how much fires there are in this present time compared to what there used to be, okay? And the wild beasts changing their places. Well, they're changing their places also because of the fires, right? And they're going to end up going into the city because the Lord is going to put the spirit on them to go into these cities. <clears throat> and menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. The monsters are dealing with these deformities, man, that these children have. That wasn't so back in the ancient world. That was a very, very, very rare thing, man. Okay. When they came to Gad, that, didn't, that was non-existent among Gad. Okay. But now that's a common thing. And, shall, uh, and, and, and salt water shall be found in the sweet. And all friends shall destroy one another. Then shall, uh, then shall wit hid, uh, hide itself, and understanding uh, withdraw itself into the sec his secret chamber. And for all we know, the salt water is already mixed with the sweet. It probably is, man, because the Esau then then destroyed the the ecosystem so much that the majority of the water is polluted. So I'm not. That's not. You know. Listen, I'm gonna have to look up on that. Okay. Because the, the Lord has created a boundary where the salt water does not mix with the um, the fresh water. Okay. Um, it said, and shall be sought of many, right? Going into what? Amos 8 and 11. And yet not be found. Then shall unrighteousness and incontinency be multiplied upon earth okay so let's go to verse let's go to chapter six this is uh second as chapter six and verse seven it says um then answered i and said what shall be the parting asunder of the times or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth and he said unto me from abraham unto isaac when jacob and esau were born of him Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So Esau is the one that is going to be ruling last. That's why Isaiah 63 says that the Lord is coming to Edom. So we know that the Edomites are in rulership, okay? Another sign that we're at the end. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump to um, chapter 9, Okay. Jump to chapter 9. We just read there was more to read, but I'm going to jump to chapter 9. Okay. This is chapter 9 and verse 1. It says, He answered me and, and, and uh, he answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself, and when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told th thee before, right? The things that we just read, okay, because that was what he told him before, then shalt thou understand. That it is the very same time wherein the highest, the most high, all right, will begin to visit the world which he made. Hey, so with that, Lord willing, you were edified. Okay, uh, we're clearly, clearly, clearly at the end. And there was more to go into. Maybe I have to do a part two at some point. Okay, 
But um, with that, I'll give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai, Bashem, Akak, Wadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of great millstone. Salutations, much love and respect to you, Akim, out there, pushing this word out in truth and sincerity. Shalom.